are Two Book Ramblers, a podcast to get you to read beyond the lines. Like Elvis said, the sun's down and the moon's pretty. It's time to ramble about books. Today in Two Book Ramblers, it's a zoo out there. Books about animals. Humans' relationships with animals is wide and deep. We humans have classified, eaten, domesticated, studied, healed, and really done many things to animals probably since ever. So it is not surprising then that we have also written books about them. The list that we have for you today is just a minute sample of all the bibliography that exists about animals out there, but it is a great way to get you started. The first book we're going to talk about today is The Rhino with Glue on Shoes and Other Surprising True Stories of Zoo Vets by Lucy H. Spellman. Many kids want to be vets and work at a zoo when they grow up, but maybe the stories related by Spellman in this book are not what they or anybody really have in mind when they think about the jobs of a zoo vet. The Rhino with Glue on Shoes has something for animal lovers or just lovers of a good story. Since we wouldn't like to spoil the stories for you, here's our six word review for this one. Exotic remedies for exotic zoo dwellers. You can give us your review for this book in six words in our page, twobookramblers.com. And for cat and book lovers alike, we have a book for you. Dewey, the small town library cat who touched the world by Vicky Myron. Dewey read more books, which is the complete name of the cat, lived at Spencer Public Library in Iowa for 19 years. He was found in the return book slot one very cold morning by none other than the author of this book. She was at the time the library director. Dewey was adopted into the library family and he became one of the most popular staff members. Today, if you find yourself in Spencer, Iowa, you can tour the library and remember Dewey along the way. And for those of you who like collections, here's one that you may like. It's called The Book of Barely Imagined Beings, a 21st Century Bestiary by Caspar Henderson. Bestiaries were popular in the Middle Ages as an illustrated collection of animals, sometimes including fantastical animals as well. Now for readers today, Henderson gives us a zoo in bound format for real animals, organized from A to Z, which proves that reality can be stranger than fiction. Wait until you read about Mustaceous or Cenophyphors or Iridogorgia or even the entry for us humans. If you would like to start a bestiary of household items of your own, you can purchase a pair of duck balloon bookends from Uncommon Goods or a magic narwhal coffee mug from Streamline or my personal favorite, Nessie, a mini Loch Ness monster to mark your pages from Autoto. You can find links to all of these on our page. Another book that we would like to tell you about is Cod, a biography of the fish that changed the world by Mark Kurlansky. And as you might have guessed by the title, this book is about cod. Kurlansky tells us here how cods have influenced people's diet, but they have also been the reason for wars and they have shaped uh, national economies. The book also includes recipe for preparing these fish. One of them that's really interesting is a soup called Fisherman's Cod Head Chowder from the Middle Ages. And what we found interesting about this is that specifies to the cook that the eyes should be removed from the head before adding it to the water, potatoes, and salt pork and onions. If you're brave enough, you can find the recipe in the book by Mark Orlansky. Another book by Mark Orlansky dealing with animals is The Big Oyster, History on the Half Shell. If you read this book, you realize that New York City's nickname should not have been the Big Apple, but rather the Big Oyster. Because oysters have played a very important part in New York's earlier history, and they have influenced New York's becoming the body metropolis it is today. Now, inspired by New York City and oysters, we have found a recipe called Grand Central Oyster Stew from Epicurious.com, and it replicates a very famous stew served at Oyster Bar in Grand Central Station, and you can find the links to this recipe in our page. But if you think some of the ingredients might be hard to find, like oyster liqueur 
and clam juice, maybe you can visit the Oyster Bar itself in New York City. And speaking of New York City, another famous animal dweller of New York are rats. And that's exactly the name of our next book. Rats, Observation on the History and Habitat of the City's Most Unwanted Inhabitants by Robert Sullivan. And as hard as it is to believe, the cover of Rats is the feature for our cover gallery this week. From afar, the cover just resembles the body of a rat. But when you look closer, you realize that this is also the map of Manhattan. And this clever design is your first encounter with Sullivan Book, who spent a whole year investigating rats in New York City. If you're feeling geeky, read The Gecko's Foot by Peter Forbes. This book, relating the inspiration for products like Velcro or self-cleaning surfaces from the natural world, is a great bibliotherapy for geeky moods. This week, we have a double feature for book versus book. The first battle deals with birds, and the book I'm introducing is called The Genius of Birds by Jennifer Ackerman. Ackerman is a very recognized nature writer, and in this book about bird behavior, she focuses on their intelligence. My book focuses on the similarities between bird and human behavior, and the book in question is The Thing with Feathers by Noah Stryker. The second battle that we have today involves smuggling and stealing of animals. The book I'm backing is Stolen Worlds, A Tale of Reptiles, Smugglers, and Scoldery by Jenny Erin Smith. And in this book, Smith tells the story of a rivalry between a dealer of exotic reptiles and a reptile breeder that have lasted for 50 years, and it has involved illegal trading and even a federal investigation. The book I picked is called The Dragon Behind the Glass, a true story of power, obsession, and the world's most coveted fish by Emily Voigt. Boyd tells us how the Asian arowana, most commonly known as dragonfish, became so coveted and of the crimes and adventures behind its acquisition. You can head to our page and tell us which book you like best, and this week you get to vote twice. We're going to make a brief pause and we're going to come back for guesswork. Welcome to this week's guesswork. First, let's address what was the answer to last week's, and it was Disappearing Acts by Terry McMillan. This week, we want to know if you can guess the title of a memoir where the narrator is an animal, and this book has not so long ago been adapted for the big screen. So here's the first line. Gestures are all that I have. Sometimes they must be grand in nature. And the excerpt from page 69. I never chase a crow. They hop away, taunting, trying to dupe you into a chase in which you'll become injured. Trying to get you stuck somewhere far away so they can have their way with the garbage. It's true. Sometimes, when I have nightmares, I dream of crows. If you think you got it, you can tell us your answer at twobookramblers.com. Before we go, let me tell you about two books being released this week that I cannot recommend enough myself. One of them is Bones by Roe A. Mills. And this is an illustrated book about bones. You might have guessed that from the title. And Mills is an orthopedic surgeon, and his book is part natural history, part comparative anatomy, part mythbuster, but it is completely entertaining. The second book I would like to recommend is A Place for Everything by Judith Flanders. And this is the history of how alphabetization came to be. I have to confess that I alphabetize everything I can possibly alphabetize, and I have never given a thought to these. But Flanders tells us in the book how the order of letters was set and it was organized, and what started as something absurd and unthinkable, and then became commonplace in our lives, it's now in decline in the digital age. We're sure you know of more books featuring animals, so let us know in the comments. We would love to know about them. If you would like to purchase any of the books covered in our show today, you can visit our TBR Bundles page for a list of titles. Until next time, do as Shakespeare said, and love all, trust a few, do wrong to none. <laughs>